It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Denson Chow, PhD. This man is amazing. He is the founder and CEO of the Chow Group in West Jordan, Utah, and engages in research and development, manufacturing, marketing, and sales of products in medical, dental, veterinary, forensic, and LED lighting. Since year 2000, Dr. Chow has led the company organically, grown into a global company, and has created many innovative technologies and products engaged fields to serve its global customers. Dr. Chow is the inventor of more than 160 issued and pending patents and published more than 20 technical papers. Dr. Chow came to the United States in 1986 from China to pursue PhD degree, University of Utah. Before founding the Chow Group in the year 2000, Dr. Chow worked as coordinator of material science at Clinical Research Associates, CRA, now CR Foundation, that's Gordon Christian and Rolla Christian, and staff engineer at Fairchild Semiconductor. Dr. Chow holds PhD and MS degrees in material science and engineering from University of Utah and MS and BS degrees in electrical engineering from Jin University of China. The notable technologies by Dr. Chow include LED curing lights, modern diode lasers, 360 degree beam LED lighting sources, LED forensic lights, and medicament delivery strips. Each of these technologies has made significant impacts on the industry and is described below. Dr. Chow invented, he invented LED dental curing light in year 2000 and introduced the first LED curing lights to the market in 2001 with a distribution partner. The key patent is U.S. patent 6,331,111, which teaches fundamental methods to build an LED curing light. There are more than 30 patents issued to Dr. Chow for LED curing light to cover all features of LED curing lights. LED curing light invented by Dr. Chow has been adopted by dentistry and becomes a standard tool in daily practice. As today, nearly all the LED curing light manufacturers license the technology from Dr. Chow. The technology is estimated to save more than $6,000 each year for each dentist in addition to providing better care for patients. Dr. Chow invented 360-degree beam LED light bulbs in 2002 and set up an instrumental structure to build an efficient 360-degree beam LED bulb to replace the tra traditional incandescent light bulb. Dr. Chow introduced the first 360-degree beam LED to the market in 2006. The key patents are 6,465,961, 6,634,770, 6,634,761, 7485 the structure invented by Dr. Chow is essential to use LEDs to replace traditional incandescent and HID lamps. These teachings are adopted by LED lighting industry worldwide. As known, LED light bulbs will save up to 70% of energy comparing incandescent light source. LED light bulb is a $25 billion industry as today. Dr. Chow also invented modern diode laser systems in the year 2003 with features of cartridge fiber management, disposable tips, touchscreen control, wireless foot switch, battery operation, and etc. The first product was introduced to the dental market in 2003 with a distribution partner. The key patents are 7,045116, 8,337097, these technologies enable the wide adoption of diode lasers in medical, dental, and veterinary fields to provide much desired patient clinical care and become standards for modern diode laser products. The diode laser market applications in dental, medical, and veterinary fields are more than $100 million industries now and growing from year to year. Dr. Chow also invented the LED forensic lights in 2004. The key patents are 6,954,270, 7,252,678 and 7,267,457. The technology enables the investigators to collect evidence timely and efficiently. The products have been widely used in policy community and featured in CSI TV shows. The products have helped to solve many cases worldwide. Notably cases are Taiwan President Shooting, John Benet Ramsey, Lacey Peterson, Kobe Bryant, O.J. Simpson, but he did not use this technology to solve my murder, which we won't talk about. The lawyers okay. told me the lawyers told me not to say anything. The same right. principle has been used to oral cancer detection in dentistry. Dr. Chow and his colleagues also invented advanced medicament delivery strip to deliver 
different medicaments to tea surface in 2006. The technology features a flexible substrate and gelatin compound to enable patients to do the applications anytime, anywhere. The technology was first applied to teeth whitening. The strip technology will be used for, for fluoride treatment, desensitizing, topical anesthesia, periodontal treatment, caries prevention, tooth remineralization, and any possible indictment delivery to oral environment. Dr. Chow continues to work in solving critical issues in the dental and medical fields, including methods to eliminate first and secondary caries, reversible cement for better bonding and debonding of prosthetics, including orthodontic brackets, sterile endo process for 100% successful endo, better prosthetic materials for long-term clinical success, advanced laser surgical procedures, laser cancer treatment, etc., with a goal to make practitioners' lives e easier, faster, and better. My God, Gordon Christian told me, you are the man behind the scenes that has done so much for dentistry. He, I mean, you are just, I mean, it's incredible. It is so Thank hard you. to get a patent, and you have so many. What are, what are you excited and passionate about today in dentistry? What are you working on now? Uh, today, I think uh, a few, you know, topics is, is critical, you know, to dentistry. Definitely, you know control carries, you know, and uh, probably you talked right lot, quite a bit already, you know, how we can arrest in carries. And uh, it's a tough challenge, you know, to the entire dentistry. And uh, so that's one thing we're working on. Another one we really uh, want to develop, uh, uh, you know, a dummy proof, you know, endo process. And uh, so every dentist can do endo. And the third one is, uh, you know, you talk about it, you want every dentist, you know, can do orthodontics. And uh, we're working on a technology we can really uh, have a, all the GPs can do, you know, orthodontic comfortably. And basically we talk about it, you know, as a reversible cement. So you can bonding, debonding the orthodontic bracket, you know, on command. So those are the few things we're working on right now. Your website is Chow Group. Chow is spelled C A O Group. Yeah. So C A O Group dot com. What would my What would all the dentists listening to you today find if they went to your website C A O Group dot com? Right now, you know, with uh, our product in North America, you know, exclusively exclusively distributed by Henry Shine and. Uh, Few product in our website right now definitely you know dial lasers and the current lights and also a winding strip. That's a uh, the main product you know, and we also have a you know a, a topical varnish for the uh, anesthetic you know applications, and we also have a hemostat agent and all other products. So, so so let's start with um so. All the diode companies. Um, well, well let, let's start with that. Let's start with LED light bulbs. Um, tell yeah. us your journey on LED. LED. How did you go from being born a thousand miles north of Beijing, end up okay. in Salt Lake City, and invent the fundamental technology <laughs> of the LED curing light? And what percent of the curing lights that the two million dentists around the world use today are using your technology that you invented and patented? Okay, um, let me answer your first question first. And uh, is, uh, uh, you know, I was born in China and my, uh, as a first, uh, you know, uh, batch of college students and after Cultural Revolution, so that's uh, 1978. When, and, when, what year uh, were you born? You were born in 62? Two, 62, same as you, you know. Same as and, me, we're both 55. You just look 10 years younger than me. You must have had Oh, a, no, I think you, uh, you look much younger. Than me. And when, and, when, uh, was, so, uh, when was Mao's revolution? Yeah, Mao's revolution died about uh, uh, 1966. And uh, so let's culture revolution. From uh, 1966 to um, 1977, there's an, all the colleges, um, you know, were stopped, and uh, no college, you know, uh, student during that time period. So China started the first uh, college, you know, entry uh, exam in starting 1977. I was lucky enough; I got in the college in 1978, so the year after. So and as how, the, how old were you then? So 62 to 70, so you were 16, 16 years old. Yeah, I was the youngest, uh, you know, student in my class. So nice. 
Nice. And, uh, so my college, I study uh, the, the called optical electronics at that time, and basically is uh, electronic deal with uh, you know uh, the product emitting lights. Right now, you can call the LED or lasers. And the reason you know um, I invented the LEDs have been you know LED have been always in my career. And uh, I came to University of Utah pursue my PhD program actually in LEDs. And my mentor, his name uh, was Jerry Streamfilo, and uh, he's the one create uh, fundamental technologies so can make LED to be a mass production. You know that's why the LED have the low cost and um, as today. And uh, so um, uh, definitely he deserve a Nobel Prize. I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, one day he may get it, you know. So that's why, you know, I'm in the LED and the laser field. And um, then I'm able to bridge and the, uh, the gap between, uh, you know, LED and the medical dental field. So as today, you know, all the LED light um, in the dentistry, they all use my technology. And uh, in the US, nearly all the uh, manufacturers uh, probably, I don't know what current light you use, however, in your practice or, you know, uh, whatever the purpose would be, I believe they all licensed my technology and uh, uh, to use that technology, you know, uh, for their products. So what was what was everyone using before the LED? Before the LED, you know, is a is a halogen. You know, the 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 good brand name is a Dimetron. You know, and uh, so uh, use the halogen light bulb, and the halogen, you know, have a lot of issues. You know, definitely number one is the heat. They have a lot of heat. Uh, number two is a. Uh, they are large size, you know, the size is pretty large and uh, like a pistol gun. And the third one is um, really the lifetime. You know, the dentist have to change the, the halogen light bulb, you know, probably every six months or so. Right now, the LED is, I think, uh, almost every single manufacturer can warranty the LED light at least for two years or longer. Some of them are even five years, so. So, you know, when um, we're both 55, I'll be 55 uh, next uh, month, August 29th. You know, when I got out of school 30 years ago, the main filling was an amalgam. It was half right. mercury, half silver, zinc, copper, and tin. And the reason it worked so well is because when it set up, it actually slightly expanded and then corroded and oxidized. And it sealed out all those microorganisms, fungi, and viruses that we can't see with our eye. And yeah. now, because of the tooth-colored cosmetic revolution, they all went to tooth-colored. And when you cure these composites with your LED light, they slightly shrink, leaving a mm -hmm. gap, which makes them um, very, very, um, you know, bugs, microorganisms get underneath it, and they don't last as long. A lot of people sure. think the metal mercury fillings lasted about 38 years. And these tooth-colored, pretty fillings last six and a half years. Do you think how will how do you think that problem will be solved in the future? Do you think you will ever um, shine an LED light on a composite and it won't shrink or maybe even slightly expand? I, I think you know you have to look at this uh, at two issues. One is really you know the curing property of the material, and and itself. Another one is. Um, you know, the material properties. Uh, you know, number one, we need a, a, a current technology so, you know, you have a least, least a shrinkage in both, you know, bonding side and also on the material side. Another one truly resolve this issue is Howard, probably you already cited uh, the amalgam, you know, history and the story. We need a white color amalgam. Okay. Yes, a white That's, metal. Is there a white metal? Are you working on a white metal? It's not a white, white metal. It's a white material can would have the same property as a amalgam. That's what you need. And when you say a white material that has the same property of amalgam, do you mean expands upon setting? Is that the, pro the main property you're looking at, or are you looking at the strength of a metal? 
Uh, no, actually, you look at it, you know, slightly uh, sighting wise, but the most import important is the lights about it. Uh, uh, critical is you need to have a long term or permanent bacterial inhabitant agent inside. That's about the amalgam about. Is amalgam to expand a little bit, but amalgam leak like, like other materials. You know, the interface between amalgam and tooth also leaks too. Is matter the bacteria, bacteria cannot exist or grow on that interface. That's about made them amalgam, you know, uh, it's good for long term, so that's why you don't have secondary less secondary carries. You know, use amalgam material. So, what do you think the back the main bacterial inhibitor is to a silver filling? I mean, it's half mercury. You never find mercury in a multivitamin. Uh, the other half of the mercury is silver. We use silver diamide fluoride in pediatric yeah. decay. Um, tin. We use um, stannous fluoride in mouthwashes in the hygiene department. Um, silver, zinc, copper, tin. What, what, what do you think is the main bacterial inhibitants to bacteria and microorganisms in an amalgam? Uh, in an amalgam, definitely is the silver. You know, that's the uh, uh, the uh, the element. You know, uh, stop the bacterial growth. Is silver? But, yeah, the silver is the one. That's why you know a lot of people use a silver diamond. You know, uh, as today, you know, uh, for quite a few treatment. You know, the key is, you know, nobody like the color. I think that's uh, also, uh, which you know, I I'm think, out. Which I think is crazy because, like, right now I've been talking to you for 10 minutes and I still haven't seen one of your molars. I mean, I, I get it if it's a girl. I get it if it's your front sure. 10 teeth up and lower. But yeah. on molars, are you out of your mind? I mean, when's the last time you've seen a man's molar? Not very often, you know, and uh, that's for sure. And uh, particular, you know, uh, depend on, you know, from person to person. And uh, uh, to me, you know, and amalgam is not a bad material, but, you know, there are politics in there. As you know, the toxic toxicity issues and, uh, you know, are being banned in Europe, not being used. So I think uh, right now the best way to look at it is how we can really make a, a material and uh, be a long-term, you know, bacteria inhibitant. And uh, that's, that's going to be the key. So are you working on that material now? Yeah, we work on a lot of material. And uh, we, uh, we did a initial study at the Un University of Washington. And uh, we can see clearly after, you know, at least one year, we cannot, uh, there's no bacteria regrowth. And uh, so for that material. And... Um, then uh, uh, we'll continue, you know, working with uh, Ryla and other people. And uh, we wanted, you know, there are more testing on there. And if this material is very feasible, like I said, it's a big if. And then we could have a material or compound or, you know, composite, whatever, or cement, whatever that would be, can be long-term bacterial inhibitant. That's very, very important. Yeah, I remember talking to the uh, president of Ivaclar, a very yeah. amazing dental company, and he said if he had two dreams, two wishes, he said it would be a composite that had a bacterial inhibiting effect, and the yeah. other one would be a reversible cement with uh, cementing crowns on implants or teeth. It would be so nice if you could do something, warm it up, zap it with a laser, something yep. to take the crown back off and check how what how is it going underneath there how close are we do you think for to a reversible cement where we could take the crown off the implant or the natural tooth and see what's going on underneath and clean it up uh i think uh, probably i would say maximum you know two years i think maybe less than that and wow. uh, and two we years? are That's yeah like less tomorrow. than yeah less than two years for sure and we already did a unique, we, we finished all the in lab study already. And uh, so we already have the product. It's a matter, you know, we need to do more validation and then um, uh, so we can put on the market. The first application will be, you know, for the uh, bonding, debond, 
also down take a bracket on command. And, and what will debond it? Will it be heat? Will it be a laser? What will I'll be? be well, be a laser. Well, I'll be a laser. And that is your. Uh, that is your. That it's always been your passion, right? Laser light amplification, stimulation, emission of radiation. Yep, and uh, also you know the material too. <laughs> So, so when you, when you, your love for lasers, and I mean, you've done so much, what percent of the diode lasers in, Amer in dentistry around the world use your technology? I don't have the exact number, but I relatively know, you know, how many, estimate how many units in the market based on the shipment, you know, we have, you know, uh, from our side and consider other people. I think uh, closely, I think it would be around between 40 or 50,000 units, you know, uh, out there. And, and is the technology, uh, you, you started out, you cut your teeth on LED curing lights, and then you moved into diode laser systems. Are LED curing light technology and diode laser systems, is that kind of a similar technology? It's the uh, same principle, but it's a different, um, you know, uh, devices. They all come from a semiconductor material, you know, emitting a light. And uh, when you emit the light in a, you know, mono wavelength, let's call the laser. When you emit the light in a broader wavelength, let's call it LED, light emitting diode. So, and what's uh, what's more cold and freezing? Where you were born in northern China or Salt Lake City? Oh, definitely my hometown, China. You know <laughs> the coldest the coldest day is uh, you know is a uh, forty below zero, you know, uh, <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> wow, I uh, I uh, so you were up near uh, near Mongolia then. Oh yeah, we are near Mongolia, and uh, actually we're north side on the east side of Mo Mongolia, and also we are uh, very close to uh, Russia. My hometown is about three hundred miles from Russia. And how, how often do you go back? Uh, I go back to China pretty often because I have a factory in there, and uh, so uh, probably every two three months. Yeah. I I have to. Can I tell you the funniest Chinese uh, story of my life? Sure. I, was, I was lecturing in Hong Kong and Shenzhen, mm -hmm. and then we went and toured. We were uh, driving, I don't know, maybe two hours into China um, away from Hong Kong. So probably two mm -hmm. hours away from Hong Kong uh, in a car. And we went and we saw a school, and uh, they were all, all, all these little kids. They, they couldn't have been five. And I sat down on the floor with them, and this the biggest five-year-old started slowly approaching me, and then he finally... He was trying to read me, like, what I was going to do. And he mm -hmm. finally reached out and touched my bald head, and he goes, oh. And as soon as it was safe and I smiled, all uh -huh. the kids leaped forward, and they were all touching Hello, my head. Touch you. My head going, <laughs> oh. It was so adorable. All right. I don't know. You're I, a lucky I man. <laughs> I, I don't think there's a lot of male pattern baldness where I was at. It was, was it because uh, is baldness rare around Shenzhen? No, I think... Uh... Not rare, probably just a, not a, you know, both people shaving the head like you did, so. That's what it was? So it was yeah. Just, it was because I was bald and shaving it, but oh my right. God, those kids were adorable. Yeah. Um, so, um, so you did, you, you did diodes, I mean, you did the um, LEDs, then you yeah. did diodes, and now you think the reversible cement is within, that we're within two years away from cementing a crown, zapping it with a laser, and being able to take the crown off and check it. Exactly. I think right now, our technology is pretty for sure, you know, we can do the orthodontic cement, can also uh, do the material like a Emax. Um, we're still working on, you know, for the material like a zirconia, you know, others, and uh, because um, they have different translucencies. And uh, so, I think of certain materials that should be in the near future for sure. So what, what's got you passionate right now? Right now, I think that we're working on, you know, we call it a uh, Star Trek project. You know, number one, definitely, you know, uh, we know some of the, you know, goals, we, we know we can reach them. Some of the goals, we know we have to explore them. You know, number one is for us is a, uh, it is like possible we can eliminate the carries. You know, definitely that's a, my biggest passion at this moment. I think uh, we may have a different method, different approach to see if, we, you know, it's possible.
And, you know, number two is, uh, is uh, I, I want to use a laser to, to treat cancers. And uh, uh, it's definitely a long-term project. And uh, But uh, we already test validated on the mice. So laser is very, very possible to treat the cancers. So. so, you know, basically I've always thought, so you're a... Um, you're basically a, um, you're an engineer. Yeah. And I've always thought whenever you're sitting at a table with a bunch of dentists, they talk like engineers. They talk about wear rates of fillings. They talk about bonding. They talk about building bridges. But I always thought that we're really, um, we build like an engineer, like we build a barn. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the barn, we lose the barn because of termites biology. And right. they're always talking about um, wear rates of fillings. I don't have a problem with my fillings wearing down. They talk about bonding strengths of fillings. I don't have a problem with my fillings falling out. What I have a problem with is that usually six and a half years after you put in that tooth-colored filling, there's a biofilm of microorganisms, right. bacteria, viruses, mm -hmm. and fungi um, that completely um, destroys and eats the tooth structure. Um, how close... Um, how close do you think we are? Uh, you've been working with uh, medicaments on strips. Um, we have the yes. same problem with implants. Um, right. Now that we've placed millions of implants over a decade ago, mm -hmm. the, the literature is pretty clear that about 20% of them have periimplantitis uh, around them. Yes. Again, I, I think dentists need to become more biologists and less engineers. We build these great structures, but they fail from biofilm, microorganisms, um, fungus, viruses. Um, what are you doing with the medicament strips? How do you think these medicaments will uh, reduce decay or periimplantitis, things like that? You know, the challenge power uh, for the oral environment is how you can consistently deliver a medicament, you know, onto the surface or in the socket. You know, and I think that's the, the number one challenge. You know, you do have good drugs. We do have good drugs like cohexine or others, you know, can, uh, you know, kill or prevent bacteria. So it's a matter how you can have those drugs, you know, can be consistently, you know, delivered to the treatment surface. I think right now you know you look at it you can use the tray you know put the gel everything in there deliver the medicament and or you can use a you know or tablet into your blood system you know circling through your blood getting into the you know treatment area and then you know brush and rinse just very you know have a very short time period of time the medicament can stay you know on the surface so the key is how you can make a device can, you know, people can put it on and uh, not being annoyed, can use it on a regular basis. And then so you can deliver, you know, put all the necessary medicament into, you know, light device and then can deliver the medicament. So were you behind the, um, the bleaching materials on the strips? Yes. Actually, I'm, wear I'm wearing my strip right now. From from crust from crust strips? No, it's ours. But but were you behind the technology of the crust strip? No, we we did not. Uh, uh, we are we are not behind the crust white strip, but we are the only one overcome you know white strips the patent and, and then uh, made a huge improvement on top of that. So right now I'm aware of my strip since I talking with you. And so you see, you cannot see the difference, and then that's the future technology. So, what is the uh, who is distributing your um, improvement upon the crust white strip? Uh, Henry Shine. Henry Shine, and what is it called? Called the Sure White. Sure White. S U R E. Yeah. No. S H E E R. Sure. S sure White. Say spell it again. S U R. No. S H. E E R Sheer Sheer White. Oh, S H E E R or E A R? E E R. E E R. Yeah. Sheer Strip White. Sheer White. White. Can you text me that, Ryan? It's called Sheer White Strips by Henry Shine. Yeah. And distributed by Henry Shine. Yeah. And is that sold to the dentist or directly to the consumer? 
uh, to the dentist, to the dentist only. To the dentist only. And what's the price of sheer white dental strips versus uh, crust uh, white strips? Uh, to the dentist, the price are around $20 per treatment. And one treatment is five days. Our five day treatment can be, you know, as uh, effective as a 14 day treatment of a crest. Nice. I just pulled that up. Um, okay. So it's on Ryan. So you sent me his, um, it the, is sheer, is sheer white dental strips. Is that, do they have their own website or are they on yeah. Twitter or is that, um, no, it's, uh, just uh, on the seal group.com website. So the CAO. Okay. Ask your Henry shine representative to order what you need today. Call 1-800-372-4346 or purchase online at Henry Shine. And and you and how much do you think the uh, crust white strips are? You think yours uh, is crust white strip to the dentist probably uh, I don't know like the price, but on the retail side, the crust white strip ranged uh, from a twenty five dollars up to uh, sixty dollars, depend on you know different uh, packaging and technology they used. Should we add this YouTube video you have at the end of our podcast? That would be great. Yeah, so um, Ryan, why don't you email that YouTube video to me, Howard at Dentaltown.com, and to Ryan. Do, do, does he need to send it to you, Ryan, or do you have it? Okay, I'll email it to you, Ryan. And what was your, um, was that your first uh, medicated strip, this uh, sheer white strip? Was that your first medicament yep. on a strip? Yeah, right now we have, uh, you know, desensitizing, we're working on the fluoride and uh, on the perio and uh, topical anesthetic and also remineralization of a tooth surface. So, and uh, we're working on, you know, all around of the, you know, treatment so people can use it as a part of their daily, you know, oral care uh, activities. You, you said something that um, um, very, very interesting. You just, uh, it just rolled off your tongue. But when dentists do root canals, and the number one cause of a failed root canal is we miss an entire canal. Right. But even if we find all the canals and we get to the bottom and we clean and shape and file them all out, we're actually only removing about 60% of all the pulp and debris and microorganisms and virus and fungi um, there's another 40% in peripheral canals, fins. I mean, there's, there's no such thing as a canal that's perfectly round to fit your file. Sure. Are you, are you working on, um, a way to clean that additional 40% that you could never file out or you would have to destroy the whole tooth to get to it all if you're going to yes. mechanically oh. remove it? Yeah, definitely. We are working on such a technology, you know, uh, you know, Gordon Christensen tell me, you know, right now endo is, uh, you know, the witchcraft. I mean, it just uh, a lot of inconsistency depend on, you know, who doing it, you know, and uh, what a technology you use. So the most important part is the residual, you know, bacteria or residual tissues, or residual, you know, contaminations, you know, after you file them. Even there are a lot of technology claim that you can clean them, like you said, Howard, but none of them can really have them cleaned. So we're working on our process, you know, we try to be a dummy proof, you know, uh, process. You can simple and easy clean uh, uh, the canals. And at the same time, after that, you know, back to the original amalgam um, conversation is, if you can fill that with a material containing uh, agent can permanently, permanently have the you know bacteria inhibitant property, so in light of why, you know you will have a complete one hundred percent success in the process. Well, you know that was the original theory of an Italian dentist named Doctor Angelo Sargenti, who mm -hmm. said um, that you shouldn't be filling these canals with an inert cement like Grossman cement, and he recommended a paste with paraformaldehyde, there's all kinds of versions of it. Some had sure. lead in it, some had arsenic mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. Um, but the endodontist did not like this at all. The lawyers did not like it at all 
because when paraformaldehyde, lead, and arsenic went out the end of the tooth, it was a disaster. So you're looking uh, for a, a an agent, a, a um, uh, what would you call it? a bacterial inhibitant in the paste that's not yep. um, toxic to the whole body if it went out the apex? Yeah, exactly. And what what would that what would have you already you already got ideas on that or can you not talk? Yeah, we work, sure? we work we we're working on that, and we are not only have the idea, we are in the middle of the process, and uh, we just definitely need a further validation. Just make sure in the apex area, you know, and then uh, will be safe to the nerve. Other than that, we we do have a material that works. We we have a you know a cement uh, like you talk about it. You know, going to expand a little bit. And uh, after being cured, then conceal the canal, same times, and also containing uh, agent that be you know long term bacterial inhibitant. Well, if you need any research, um, you know if you can't afford primates and monkeys and apes and all uh -huh. that stuff, I will donate my five sisters and my four sons. All right. Uh, to this research, <laughs> Ryan, would you mind being the first? Guinea pig. He can't afford a rhesus monkey, uh, so I'll send. Uh, I'll send Ryan. Um, All right. You know, you yeah. you you have an extensive background in lasers, and there are some endodontists around the world trying to clean canal systems with lasers. Uh, what what are your thoughts of that? You know, laser alone that would not work, uh, just because uh, you need uh, uh, quite a bit of energy you know, to carbonize, uh, you know, the tissues or clean the surface of the dentin. And, uh, you know, that energy would cause big thermal issues, you know, for the tooth. You know, just uh, be better kill the tooth if we just <laughs> use the laser alone. So laser alone, I think, is quite a bit proven at this moment until, you know, other new wavelengths being, you know, uh, identified. Current lasers on the market, doesn't matter if it's a diode or a solid lasers or, you know, CO2 laser itself cannot do the endo process. You know, people talk about the PIPs, all those things, they can do parts of endo process, but they cannot do complete endo process. So it has to be a laser plus, you know, other chemicals, and uh, so you can use a low energy of a laser, and uh, cut with a local, you know, uh, uh, ablation effect without without you know increasing temperatures on the apex area or the entire tooth structure. So, um, I, you know, when you look at dentistry, um, half the world is afraid of a dentist. The other half are afraid of the cost of a dentist. It seems like. The two major fears is, are you going to hurt me, and how much is this going to cost? Regarding, are you going to hurt me? What do you think of the um, of the lasers? Um, you you've done extensive diode lasers. What do you think of the hard tissue lasers? And do you think that will ever be mainstream to remove um, tooth structure? I think uh, right now, you know, hard tissue definitely can, uh, hard tissue laser-wise, you know, ND, YAG, erbium, or CO2, they can definitely remove tooth structure. And, uh, but, you know, the cost definitely is, uh, uh, is a prohibit uh, feature at this moment. And, uh, you know, compare dial lasers, you know, around 5,000 to, you know, in that uh, uh, price range, but, uh, you know, most uh, hard tissue lasers still range around $30,000. Th you know, plus they cut slow compared to high-speed handpiece. I think that's another uh, drawback for hard tissue laser. But if the price is lower enough for hard tissue lasers and then uh, dentists learning how to master to use laser to cut tissues, you know, it can be a mainstream and uh, uh, definitely going to be, you know, uh, a lot drive to lower the price and also increasing the cutting speed. You know, dentistry, however you know, you have been in dentistry how, ma how many years? It's a slow years. industry, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you look at laser have been in dentistry, you know, almost more than 20 or 30 years and still not a mainstream. And uh, you look at a CAD cam. Also, I first remember, you know, look at the first CAD cam, you know, from a 
Sarek uh, when I was uh, in the CRA and the less about it, you know, uh, almost 25 years ago. You look at it today, you know, still had another mainstream. So I guess the less had to wait for until the technology really mature, but, um, you know, need another round of innovation from time to time, you know, get the technology into the mainstream. Well, when dental x-rays came out and when the high-speed handpiece came out, pretty much all the dentists adopted it within a year or two. But when the CAD cam came out and when the lasers came out, 25 years later, they don't even have 10% of the dentists. Right? That's correct. Let's correct. I think it less uh, is a matter, you know, is uh, can uh, those technology resolve the immediate issues, right? <laughs> you know, and uh, you know the X-ray definitely, you know, is uh, uh, a necessary tool, you know, and um, uh, same thing for the you know high-speed handpiece. You look at a cat cat cam and uh, also laser-wise, you know, is uh, is an accessory at this moment. You know, it will help, but it's not saying, hey, I must have it. So do you think as far as um, um, the implants go, uh, we've heard that uh, an implant company, you, you know, when you place a hip implant, if it gets a staph infection, it, it's a nightmare. And mm -hmm. there's word out that um, Zimmer uh, is coming out with a um, surface on their titanium that will be more resistant to a staph infection on the surface of its implant. When you look at um, um, filling materials, you say the filling material should have uh, the composite, the tooth-colored white material should be bacterial inhibitant. Um, do you think um, it will be that and medicaments on strips or floss? Do you think the next generation of titanium dental implants will have some type of bacterial inhibitant on their surface, or do you think that will also be something applied with floss and strips? I'm still always surprised that your standard floss that Amer that people use around the world doesn't have a medicament on it. Yeah, I think that you're, you're absolutely right, you know, uh, Howard. Uh, definitely next generation implant material, definitely, you know, avoid imp you know, few things you know already avoid, you know, uh, bacterial growth, infection, at the same time, you know, uh, reduce the periodontal disease. All those things I think should be incorporated in the next generation uh, implant. And uh, uh, I think not, probably not only us, will be many companies working in this direction. Yeah. So what, uh, um, so what's next for you? I've been talking, I, I've been asking you a lot of questions, but I feel like I'm not smart enough to be asking you the questions. I feel like I'm not smart enough to even know uh, where, where your mind is. Uh, what, what, what's, what's, uh, what's next around the corner for you? I don't know. I mean, uh, definitely my passion is uh, develop new technologies. And um, I don't set, set myself in a box, you know, I just, uh, if one day I wake up, have an idea, my colleague has an idea, you know, one thing I know next, let's try it, see if it works, right? And let's throw many things to the wall, hope one thing will stay, you know. Internally, we have like a 20, 30 project going parallel. We don't know which one would work, <laughs> work as well until, you know, we got a, the scientific evidence. So that's what uh, the engineer about it. We rely on everything on science, not for instinct, you know. And uh, so, um, you know, next thing, big thing, I think if we, we could, you know, work on eliminated carries. That would be the, the big one. You know, how we can uh, come out a method, you know, and when you go to the dental office, they'll tell you, hey, Howard, you would have a high risk for for carries because a lot of people misunderstood carry quite a bit through our, you know, uh, research is, you know, a lot of thing is uh, related to the genetic, you know, how much calcium can be released from your gland, you know, that's one of you know major factors for carry. At the same time, people are always thinking, oh, you, if you have a you know low pH level, you would have carries. But uh, the carry really determined by two major factors, and one is a pH level, another one is buffer capacity. You know, in your mouth, the buffer capacity determined is really by how much calcium you would release to the saliva. You know, to your uh, to your gland. So it's a genetic. And so how we can, you know, 
tell have the dentist help patients say, hey, you can be high risk. You need uh, to uh, do more, you know, for your oral hygiene. So, you know, flossing and at the right time and uh, brush. You know, every people know we brush teeth at the wrong time every day. You know, the morning and the evening. That's all the you know wrong time you do. The best time to brush your teeth is uh, within fi- fifteen minutes after you're eating. You know, any food. So, and my next thing definitely, you know, try to find a way if we can really, you know, uh, conquer, uh, you know, arrest carries. You know, that will be my big goal. But I don't know if I can accomplish on that. But uh, definitely, I'll give it a try. And uh, another one, you know, we we did a, a good good um, uh, testing already. Got the initial results. Hopefully. We can use a laser at one day. We can cure cancer. So, well, let, let's go back before we get into oral cancer. Let, let's go back to uh, um, you say we brush your that that carries has more to do with the pH level and the buffering capacity of saliva, how much calcium your body could emit, and that would be genetic. You say we brush at the wrong times. First thing we wake up before we go to bed, and the best time to brush within fifteen minutes. You know, a lot of people wonder about toothpaste that they're too abrasive. And when you look at the abrasivity chart, it looks like what our grandpa was using 100 years ago, which is just straight out Arm & Hammer baking soda, seems to be the least abrasive and the best at buffering. Do you, what is your favorite toothpaste? And then there's some people like Trisha O'Hare, a very famous hygienist who says she doesn't even believe in toothpaste. She just thinks dry brushing is actually uh, effective, and then all the toothpaste and surfactants and all that stuff, uh, she she doesn't even uh, care about any of that. She prefers dry brushing. So where do you weigh in on all that, that, all that rant? Okay, definitely, I don't have my favorite toothpaste. I just pick up whatever, you know, it's available. I think all the toothpaste, I would agree with the, you know, the hygienist is, uh, you know, toothpaste, they just, uh, as a, you know, a media make your tooth brushing a little bit, you know, comfortable or pleasure, you know, uh, all those things. And definitely, you learn a lot of medicament in toothpaste that help you, you know, and to for the biofilms, for the bacteria, you know, whining, you know, perio and desensitizing, all other things. But it is none of them really, the, you know, working effectively efficiently. And uh, so it's. All about it, you know, public education. I don't know why. I truly don't know why human, be- you know, you and I have to just have the habit, you know, go brush the teeth in the uh, evening before I go to bed. Maybe you know, just uh, want uh, your partner feel good about it, or, <laughs> or you know, you brush in the morning and uh, want a fresh brush. And so, you know, it's all those things that work, but you know, it's it will do less work for your oral, you know, health. And, uh, you know, based on the data we collected, we know your high risk time in your oral uh, uh, environment is a fit within uh, 15 or 30 minutes after you're eating food. Particularly, you're eating sugars or whatever, you know, those bacteria and uh, well, grab it, any sugars, uh, you know, in your mouth and uh, discharge acid immediately. That's about it, how we got to carry. So um, if people can have a, you know, either rinse or brush or flossing, you know, after eating, and we would have less carries for sure. I think it was amazing when Relic Christian was telling me that, um, you know, if you ask a dentist, what causes a cavity? They'll just say streptococcus mutans. And <laughs> Relic was saying that by the time you get four millimeters deep into a cavity, that there's yeah. not even streptococcus mutans. Right. And that four millimeters down into a cavity, every three months, they're uh, they're uh, discovering a complete new species of bacteria. And then there All was right. another paper I read this year that um, they were uh, very amazed at how much fungi work together uh, with other bacteria. So fungi and bacteria are working together in the cavity. Yeah, definitely. Let's... Uh... You know, uh, I just talked to Rayla a couple of weeks, uh, three, four weeks ago, and, uh, you know, she found a lot of new bacteria. I said, you know, she should be getting nominated for Nobel Prize, too, because, uh, you know, she's doing a lot of work. Other people, 
you know, do not want to pioneer or explore, you know, and you have to definitely invest time and money into it. And uh, so, you know, every people know, you know, the we have a more than, you know, hundreds bacteria in our, you know, oral environment to living with us every day. You know, if you're talking bacteria, you know, if you're talking dirty, dirty is a place in the human body is your mouth <laughs> because you have a more bacteria in that place than any part of your body. <laughs> so wh- who are you doing your endodontic research with? Uh, we, we, right now we do it internally. Right now we may have a team up with the other schools doing it. So, well, um, um, Hey, um, Ryan, Brad, will you bring your uh, endo book and come over here? This is a, uh, um, probably one of the smartest people in the world. He's got a PhD and a, um, he's working on it, on a endo. Ryan, can we take this off to where, um, just set it down. Um, this is Brad Gettleman. This, this is the man who has. Yeah. Well, here you put it on. I, I, can, I can talk to him. Um, this is Brad Gettleman. He wrote a chapter in the uh, chapter eight in the um, most read endodontic book. But this is the man. Um, he has a PC he's from China. He's up in Salt Lake City. But he's the one who has all the patents on the LED curing lights, the modern diode laser. So when you're using an LED curing light, or you see a diode laser in dentistry, they're using, he, he's got like 20 patents. But he's working on an endodontic cleaning system. Tell, tell Dr. Gettleman. What's your cleaning system? What, what is your cleaning system? Uh, our cleaning system is a, use a laser and a solution. And... Uh, this solution have a 100% absorption of the laser energy. The solution so cost- absorbs laser energy. Right. And okay. the solution itself can explode, you know, in a micro level to ablate all the residual tissues or, uh, you know, bacteria, whatever inside the canal. Okay. It kills bacteria. Does it, it dissolves tissue as well? Yes. Vital? Uh, not, not a, yeah, I mean, anything, you know, inside of the canal, uh, carbonized it. Okay. What does it do to the dentin? It's, uh, going to carbonize a thin layer of dentin. Okay. And seal off well, well, the canals? Uh, well, well, can have all the tubules exposed. Go ahead, say that again, I'm sorry. Going to have all, you know, after, uh, carbonization and all the tubules can be cleaned, exposed. Okay, including accessory canals, then I assume. Yes. To what depth? Any idea what depth? Uh, we're going to use a fiber tip, and oh, you mean the depth? Depth uh, right now we measure them at about a few hundred microns. So. Okay, and so it's a solution as opposed to all the other lasers. You have to have straight line, sort of, control and access. This is a solution that gets activated and yeah. dissolves the tissue, kills the bacteria. Interesting. Exactly. Interesting. I mean, it's because the new the new hot thing right now, or the not the new, but the thing that's been hottest lately is the Sono Endo. Yeah, so Sono Endo is a cycling the cycling the you know chemical yeah, agent. It's, exactly. It's it's uh, and, you know and uh, Sono Endo. Sono Endo. Yes. Yeah, so, Sono Endo. S O N E Endo. Sono Endo. And who makes that? That's the company. And where they at? Uh, I believe they are in Boston. I believe. Yeah. Boston. Yeah, Boston or San Francisco, either way. So, and is there a main feature just for endo? Or is it yeah, just, just endo. And, and just for endo. endo How long has it been on the market? A, a good couple of years. I mean, like I said, it's the uh, new. They, they have been there about a year or so. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's been, it's been they, they've been, I know a little bit about it. I've not used one. I mean, I can, I can talk to you about it, and we can look it up, and you can get a rep to come talk to you. It's interesting stuff, but it's. You know, it's getting into the real conservative end of end, which is where he's going with this. It's more conservative preparations, just because yeah. the bottom line. Our is, technology. Like we talked about yesterday is the, what, the reason we shape is just so yeah. we can fill. We can create a, pat, a, a right situation, a system we can fill. If we just clean the canals, we don't. We, the shape is just to put gutta perch in. 
Exactly. You know, it, it's the, the cleaning is the key thing. And we've yeah. never been able to sterilize a canal system. If he's saying 100%, he's talking sterilization. He's not talking 95% or disinfection. And there's a big difference there. Exactly. If you can, if you can call ster- create sterilization, it's a big difference. Than, look, I look like a sportscaster with my Titleist hat on. So the guy, <laughs> so Bubba Watson just a nice drive on the third hole. <laughs> um, it, it, there's a big difference. I can, I can talk to you about all that stuff if you want to and the misinterpretation, misunderstanding. But um, if you want to go up and, to Utah and talk with him and look at this, I'll go up there with you. Well, yeah, I mean, no, it's, no, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, it's, I'll, uh, if you want to. I'd, I'd it's like a key. I think. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Name Brad, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, Brad, the you, key. Dr. I Gettleman think it, to, Howard has to call me Doctor Gettleman. You can call no, me Brad, no, though. No, <laughs> so no, you know, you, not be Howard, you, please. You, you, you made you made it the key point. <laughs> even you know, even I'm not a dentist, but uh, you know, you made a key key point is uh, right now. Doesn't matter what the technology you on the market. There's not a technology. They can claim sterilization. No, no, no. You, you, you cannot. There, there's a lot of companies that falsely claim that, but they're full yeah. of baloney. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Doctor Denson Chow, this is the number one endo book in the world, and there's Brad. And the reason I'm so mad at Brad is he abbreviated the H Howard. It's Bradley Howard Gettleman. He should have just gone B. Period Howard. <laughs> no. But more importantly than that. I have a lot better. I've covered the hat. All right, all right. Better yeah. hair than Howard. That's so, you, so, so, you, so you don't have to shave. <laughs> I mean, let's get down to the brass tacks of what's important here. Um, no, I mean, I, I'd be, I'd like to talk to you about it, and, and I'll fly up you there know, for a uh, few hours and, wait, and look wait. at this with him if you want to, Howard. I, you know, we, we got this idea. We talked to, um, you know, uh, Dr. Cohen uh, three, four years ago, Steve and Cohen. he said, yeah, he said, go for it. If we can do that, that'll be, you know, we, in the last four or five years, you know, we have doing different testing, everything all together. I think that we're getting very, very close. I think uh, the process I taught Howard is, uh, you know, I don't think I tell Howard, but I can just describe to you since you're both on the, you know, the biggest book on the endodontics and no. I'm not trying to educate you anything just so I to get your input. You know, our process is like this. You know, you open up the canal, you use one file, you know, what a number would be move the bulk tissue uh, in the canal. Then you irrigate our solutions, and then you we, you have to dry um, uh, the canal with the paper point. After that, you put our specialized uh, fiber tip, you know, into the apex area just slowly moving up you know okay and and uh, this fiber have the special property have a you know a very very large you know wet angle beam and uh, what definitely angle beam? Heated, a wet angle me, beam diode is about a 65 so okay. it'll cover all the canals but the big challenge is the heat you know and uh, so managing the heat you know from the right concentration uh, of the dye and the uh, right, you know, power siding have been the key for the key. Then after that, we can carbonize everything inside the canal. Okay. And you're, you're right along what's hot in endo right now, which is conservative preparations. Let's not induce fracture. That's the whole sewn endo yep. deal and whatever is going to more and more conservative preparations. The problem that we've had with our irrigating solutions and, and I want to, Something that you'll have to address is when you're putting the solution down the canal, we're, uh, we're falsely impressed with ourselves, our ability to get the hypochlorite down to the apical. We don't. We get a vapor lock. I mean, yeah. you have you know, the endovac, which is really nice, does a good job because mm-hmm. um, it, it carries it. Now, you familiar with the endovac, how it brings the solution yeah. down yeah. and sucks it back up. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. It gets clogged up, but it, it's the idea is nice because it actually carries that solution down the apical region, which has been something that. You know, you get a, we don't always get that as much as we think we do. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm not, I, the, I think that, all this with you. I don't know. I'm sure you've addressed this stuff, but these are issues that you'd have to prove you can avoid. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, and they're big issues. They're big. They're big issues. Um. Go ahead. I mean, I'm just things that I come to mind. I mean. Yeah, I think uh, you know. Uh, then, you know, there are two. 
the two issue, Brad, you know, you and Howard knows already. Let's how we target endo. Number one, make sure you clean them well, you know. Number two, then you can seal them well, you know, so you don't have any leakage. And that's, you know, uh, same time. Both after cro you coronally, apically, as well as coronally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, after that, then you must have, a, you know, a property long-term bacterial inhibitant. So, which doesn't zinc oxide does for a few days? You have no. To, you, you have zinc no, oxide zinc oxide, you know, we, 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 test the, we test the zinc oxide, it's doing nothing. Yeah, it, it doesn't do what we've been told. What you, so you have an obturation material that's antibacterial? Yes. <laughs> the, it's the formalin. The formaldehyde in the... No, it's, a, it's something, you know, brand new, never used in the dentistry before. That's number one. Number two is... A, and it's antibacterial. Can, yes, long term. Wow, that's pretty cool. Can you tell us what it is, or is that a secret? Uh, still, at this moment, still confidential. At this moment, but I want you to tell us. But but it is antibacterial long. What what do you, when you say long term, what is that? Is that forever? Is that nearly forever? I mean that's pretty cool. I mean something an antibacterial obturation material would be really nice. Yes. So even dentists don't clean them for a while. Even you still have some bacteria left in inside the canal. Again, we're getting sterile. You know, you still control the infection. Yeah. This, guy, this guy's on the right path, Howard. Right this guy's. This is good. Well, this, this potentially, on, this is. This could be a big deal. He's on. I mean, if you look at his track record, he's. Uh, he's already batting a million. I mean, he's this. On. This is impressive stuff. I mean, without knowing the name and the, and, and seeing the literature, and you're doing the research right now. Yes. <laughs> we all do in house, you know, and uh, we usually we don't research, you know, outsource everything other than you know at the right stage. I talk to, you know. Gordon Norellas, you know. So when uh, can we come up and, and talk to you and take a look and see? And anytime, anytime. You and Howard are welcome here. Anytime we are in Salt Lake City and... Uh, it's an hour and 20 minute flight from here. 20 minute it's, flight, it's, you let me know. Okay. And uh, of course, we may coordinate a time, you know, based on your travel schedule, my travel schedule. But yeah, welcome to come, you know, any given time. So what is, so Silicon Valley was the high tech and now they're calling it in Utah, what do they call it, Silicon Slopes? Yes, called Silicon Slope. And if you look at the, I mean, if, if you said, okay, Silicon Valley is the hottest tech bed, where would be next? It's actually northern Utah. It's, it's actually. Yeah, Utah, you know, have a, the, a lot of startup companies, particularly in the software, you know, and other medical field. You know, about uh, dental companies. Yeah, and look, you know, of course, Utah, you have Ultradent, you know, you know, Dr. Fisher, of course, and, and then, uh, you know, you have Dentrix, you know, that's the Herman Schein, you know. Uh, dental Intelligence. Uh, yeah, Dentrix, I mean, there are, there are many uh, dental, dental companies in Utah, so. Yeah. This, this, well, could, this could be big. Yeah, well. Uh, I nice meeting you. We'll see you in a few months. Hey, oh, yeah. Like I said, Brad, if you and Howard can uh, come here we'll, at we'll, your we'll convenience, definitely let me know. I, I'll be happy to demonstrate the technology to you. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to see it. And like say, if you need any research monkeys, I'll donate my five sisters and all four of my kids. And all Brad, right. And Brad <laughs> you know, Howard, I already give you a, no, well, here's, Ryan, here's, I already give a thumb I'll up, do, right? Here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll access, I'll access a, a molar on Howard, and we'll go ahead and operate it when we're up there. <laughs> okay? I'll access it. We'll leave it open the oral cavity. We'll get it filled with all kinds of bacteria and crap for about two weeks. Then we'll go up there and see how antibacterial your obturation material is. See if it was no, see, actually, if he lives through. We may have. Something. No, I can, I, Brad. I can show you the data. Right I can show you the data. We did a one-year study uh, at University University of Washington, and can you, um, can you email it to me? I'd love to. I'd love to read it. Yeah, we we, we definitely can, can send to you, and then you get in my email. So, you know, the the key right now, uh, we did definitely need more testing validation for sure. But we want to kill bacteria, but we don't want to kill all the bacteria, right? So, <laughs> well, I also I'm adjunct faculty at UMKC School of Dentistry in the grad endo department. If you want to do more research in other locations, I can help you with that too, because obviously doing research in sorry, multiple locations sorry. is key, as far as your yeah exactly. I mean, you know, endo is 
I mean, if you're doing yeah. research multiple locations, that's real important to get not the kind of bias. Sure. I can set you up the University of Minnesota, but I'm on staff. I'm adjunct faculty at UMKC graduate department, UM school. Now. All right. So if you want oh, to work okay. with a grad student, I can line that up too. So how 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 the you know KC Dental School because my daughter are playing applying dental school you know this I, year. I don't, well, Howard and I were who the heck knows that's you know we're. I, I want to introduce you but, to the uh, smartest man in the state. These guys, this is the end of daughters who wrote a chapter in Catholic called Brad Gettleman, and this You're is Brad uh, yeah. Oh, hey, and this is You're, uh, Chris Volchek. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you, Chris. Chris but Chris. Dr. Chris Volchek invented the only 100% way to sterilize root canal. What he does, he takes his patients and he cremates them until they're just. <laughs> that's, that's about up to now. That's the only. That's the only way to do it. And, uh, he, he, nice he, meeting you. He, he nice to meet you too. Uh, Who is this? Who is this on? Well, here, uh, uh, Dr. Jensen Chow. He's uh, he's the one who invented the diode lasers, the LED curing light. Uh, he, he invented all, all these LED curing lights that we use. Very good. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's the man. And he's... Uh, I mean, how do you, he's, he's, he how do you a, pronounce your name, sir? Uh, uh, Danson Chow. Chow. Good good to meet you. Look Chris Bolt. Good to meet you. 160 yeah. pounds. Wow. Where are you located? Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah. How long have you been in Salt Lake? Uh, at least my uh, 31 year you know, oh. anniversary. So oh, very good. Yeah. Are you often on Howard show? No, this is the first time. Oh, it is. Yeah, I we don't know you. We, we never have met each other before, and uh, just because uh, you know Gordon uh, Christensen mentioned my name and uh, Howard connect me, I thought I'll oh, be definitely be good talking with Howard. So. Oh, very good. Yeah. Hold on, hold on one second. LED dental curing lights, modern diode laser, three sixty. What university are you associated with? Uh, uh, no, I'm a. I have your own. I have own my own company. So. Okay. Okay. Very good. Did you already do your podcast with Howard? Uh, I think we're halfway, almost done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's very good to meet you. Oh, you came in '86. Okay. So this. What, what province? Uh, Heilongjiang. I will let you continue without her. It was very good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, I'm Dr. Hadfield. Welcome. Let's talk about curing lights. CAO, the pioneer of LED technology, has developed a new light called the Ascent PX. Let's take a look at some of the features of this light. One of the first things you notice about the Ascent PX is its sleek design. It works with any photo initiator and fits all standard handpiece holders. The long, narrow wand provides an advantage as it rotates a full 360 degrees. The low profile head makes it easy to access all areas of the mouth. The Ascent PX is a fast LED with a high intensity and wide spectrum output. The unique reflection allows you to cure all dental materials fast and completely. A thorough cure only takes about 5 seconds. When you're finished using the Ascent PX, you can detach the end of the light to sanitize it with approved antimicrobial cleaners. The long life lithium ion battery allows one charge to last up to three days and provide nearly 200 full powered cycles. And the unit can become easily corded if needed. The Ascent PX is a fantastic light. In fact, it's the light I use in my office. For more information, go to caogroup.com.